Good morning, you handsome devil. You meet again, Kirk. Button my shirt. I'm not doing the floating head routine today. I'm not. Or, oh no, I'm not. No, Why? Because I'm not wearing black. That's right. Your your um your body is evident. Yes. These are my favorite shirts. LL Bean. LL Bean. They're uh, high quality. Oh, just wonderful. Fresh coffee. Fresh coffee. Mm. Good people. That's right. That's right. I feel like I was thrown in the deep end with the, the wild fish, man. It's crazy business. Oh, you mean you started participating in the just like it's like in the in these chat chatty places that are quite interesting. There's like, I don't know, four or five of them all together, and they go from me me eye rolling. Right uh, uh, to oh God, down to well. Of course, this is where we do the real business. That's right. I think they let you in the real business. We're in, you're in the real business. I say there's some sharp <clears throat> there. There's some very sharp people. Yeah, you, you don't want to. No, no, no. You don't want to try to outwit those guys. I don't like do that at all. I'm like, <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> I, I don't either. <laughs> <laughs> startled yeah I, I did have some interesting revelation since we last spoke and it had to do with this uh the you're not letting me speak and i haven't started out with anything funny yet today oh you know I, I don't feel i don't feel acclimated so i'm just going to tell you that in the absence of absence of that of some humorous introduction i'm going to have to find insert humor somewhere else in the conversation I don't have anything to be funny about, so let's oh, just go ahead. That's all good. That's all good. Like I, I was, um, it was, it was this. I did some of my research, which was not well appreciated by anybody but me. <laughs> which is, you know what I mean? It's like this. I, I was, I was, I was laughing about it because I was thinking about. You know, I like have all the. I keep the. I used to keep lots of different notebooks, but I, I decided to keep all my thoughts in one notebook. And it's like what, what I'm impressed by you, you and your activity. Is you've made a giant hanger for all the craziest things you can think about. And then you just type it up and it goes over there, or over there, or over there. It's just you for 20 years. That's impressive, yeah. man. That's a quite an interesting feat. It's a it's a a giant warehouse full of, of thoughts. Well, again, again I, I always say I, I'm not I say I'm not that smart. I have a talent. Right. It's just that uh, some people can sort information by whether they like it or not or what it means to them. But I sort information by consistency and it's obsessive. In other words, I, I, I don't work at it. It just it, it shows. <laughs> <laughs> very, very detailed. <laughs> so so what happens is you know um i think that you know there's we all get taught like you made fun of the venn diagram issue all right i mean which is the dumbest fucking thing right i mean i still use them once in a while when i want to show something incredibly stupid right but i actually associate it somewhat like you with stupid right um but um and then you can, of course, get off into mathematics and set theory and all sorts of things that vary on it. But the thing that worked for me was uh, law, the way law organizes information, the way economics organizes information, the way you um, normalize a database, and specifically that and the way you do um, object-oriented analysis and design. Okay. Well, the way you do object, if you, I've done this for years, right? You do object-oriented analysis and design is you interview people and you're basically writing down nouns and verbs, right? And then you build a structure out of the relationships between the data structure out of nouns and verbs. And then you do sophisticated things to like develop classes, which is admixtures of these things and to generalize them, right? But uh, that's, so, and one of the things you develop is, is uh, types 
a type is a, a data structure that um, is ordered in some way or another, right? And so technically we call these domains or ranges or types. Well, what is all that doing that I just said? It's disambiguation. And the difference with the with object-oriented analysis design versus, um, mo in other words, this is why it's very important to learn a program <laughs> is it's operational, not sets, right? It's operational, not allegorical or ideal. Whereas mathematics is ideal, set theory is ideal. These are the, the actions in mathematics and um, not so, not always, but. And the way we perform a lot of mathematics and the way we treat set theory is things magically move around, right? But in programming, things don't magically move around. Things move around in a tedious chain, tedious, testable, manageable, recordable, editable chain, repeatable chain, right, of sequences, just like you would be picking up a coffee cup, right? I mean, now the data structure of picking up a coffee cup it's pretty general, right? I mean, it's, it's a, in, in English language, it's pretty stupid, right? Right. The spatial computations that are necessary to convert those streams of light into a set of muscular patterns, right? That do it is hard. The uh, ability to understand that you would want to pick up, it up, pick such a thing up, that there is a cup there in the first place, disambiguous, these are all, these are all things, but they're all disambiguated by the operations necessary because human existence is built from the need to act. But communication, communication is not. Human communication is, is, is an action, the purpose of which is to create a model, right? That someone can absorb, that can, that can be influenced by, <clears throat> whether positive or negative. So, and then in our bodies and minds, we rarely can introspect on our neural activity. We don't, we, we, you know, psychologists still talk in terms of emotions. I had a great conversation with psychologists the other day, right? They don't think in terms of acquisitions and capital, right? And so, you know, we have this language that's built on emotions, which are responses that have no first principles. Right, so there, there's no, so that, that's why they're inconsistent. That's why your emotions mean different to you than me or someone else or whatever is the system of measurement is, it's close, but it's not identical. It's certainly not, it's not universally commensurable, right? And it's not built from first principles. That means you can't reason from it. Right, it's not measurable. <clears throat> yes. Right. So the, 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 but in the end, what is it? It's continuous recursive disambiguation. Well, what's language? It's continuous recursive disambiguation. What's, what's evolution? It's continuous recursive disambiguation. There's just one fucking rule. You and I have become masters of talking about that one fucking rule at every scale of the universe over the past you know, nine months. But uh, if, so I have developed a, my natural autistic need for patterns, right? consistent patterns like if something doesn't fit it fucking bugs me it can make me angry right <laughs> so uh so uh so it just it ju that thing found its comfort in a tools in a set of tools across the spectrum of continuous recursive disambiguation from language and law to economics and behavior right um, and to uh, computer science, which is the underlying logic. So like pre we say all the time, previous generations think in sets, they think in ideals, right? It's why it's what went wrong with physics, with Einstein and Bohr. And you know, they, they, they told a half truth that was so exciting and so useful that they destroyed physics. <laughs> What? Right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so anyway, uh, so so what you were breaking about is uh, I was trying to show use your comment to show how important it is to learn how to think 
in programming. And I don't mean like HTML. I mean like how al in the thing of types, functions, types, structures, functions, different kinds of databases and uh, classes. And there's a war right now in programming because the the class system, the probability of programming is meant for simulations. In other words, actions, whereas functional programming is not, right? And so you have this, you have people trying to say there's a better way to program when it's like, okay, well, it's like measuring volumes of water versus lengths of, you know, yard, yards of distance. It's a stupid comparison when they're actually two different functions. All right, so, so yeah, you sort these things. And I have a, I pretty much remember everything, which is what you said. I, I read, I can't stop reading or it makes me feel bad, right? And then I, so I store all this stuff. It gets forced into consistency for me because I feel like, I feel all the equivalent of physical pain if I can't make it fit. And over time, uh, you become a, you learn enough skills to uh, discover the fundamental rules of the universe and to realize that fundamental universe is itself the consistency across all domains of knowledge, right? So yeah, it's a, but the problem is you, you, it's like anything else. I can't look back anymore. Like I can't remember what it's like to be normal. I mean, if I ever was normal, but I mean, I can't remember what it's like to not think that way. Does that make sense? I understand what you're saying. So <clears throat> it's like, <clears throat> it's very hard for me. You know, I had to come to the realization this week that, you know, the rate at which people can grasp a logical dependency or, or, a, or, or a logical inference declines really rapidly under about 105. And so what we see is, is, as um, evil sometimes, it's just the dog can't do that, period. And then the problem is that number is way too large quantity of, of population at that range yeah and the percentage of the population no. is way too large so this is why uh, this is the the canary in the coal mine for those people um, who argue inequality it's not just that you can't learn as fast and no. therefore your investment is there it's that the barrier to actually being able to make inferential and um, um, sequ uh, consequential deductions, right? They, they actually uh, is is far low. It, it's a far higher IQ that loses that ability than we'd originally thought. It's probably closer to a standard deviation because you can't do anything functional <clears throat> at a at, under one standard deviation from a hundred, right? Okay. Right? But uh, it may be under one hundred you start losing your ability to make inferential judgments. And that appears to be a very steep climb. So that would mean, that would explain an awful lot of the world, right? Uh, um, now you can, tr that's the reason you train people in religion, you train people in norms, traditions, and values, et cetera, is because 99% of what we do <laughs> fits. <laughs> and those two boxes, right? If, That's right. You, you, can, you don't need to be. You don't have to use your brain much. You don't. You don't. You just behave, have to behave like you were trained. Yes. You'll, you'll fall back into your training if you're stressed. It'll be okay. Boy. But likewise, we get the midwit problem. You know, I always think like <laughs> I want to. I like the people that are like the technical average, which is like 105, you know, somewhere between 105 and 110. Okay. They, they didn't go to college, but they do real jobs. <laughs> you, know? you know what I mean? So they have, a, they, they live. Those are mutually exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> well, they live in the real world. Right. Right. Now you can find a day laborer, right? Who's, you know, I think of it, I think, I don't want to pick on anybody, but I'll right. pick on painters right painters are the guys that get shit in the construction business all the time right um it's like in the in the with the because part of the construction business i know which is commercial right there's a bunch of guys who pick the dirt shit up off the floor all right not rocket scientists right but they got a job <laughs> that's right they're productive <laughs> you know 
I have some stories about building in downtown Boston with unions, and oh my God, it's a magic miracle that anything got done. I mean, what is it? I, I, it was because downtown Boston used to have the, I don't know if it still does, I haven't been back in so long, used to have basically the red light district, which was really red lights, right? And they used tokens for the prostitutes and all the other things. And, and so the construct, I would find these tokens the guys would be gone at two o'clock in the afternoon and, you know, there'd be tokens around the place. Right. Cause that's what they were doing. Yeah. They were getting the minimum amount of hours in, then they go and hang out and get drunk in this strip. <laughs> it was just the worst. Anyway, I'm getting lost. So I kind of like the average, it's the, to me, it's the average guy, right. Right. He can fix a lawnmower, you know, uh, right. plumb the sink, you know, uh, so then you get the the problem is then you get the midwits. That's it, the, the midwit problem. And those are the people that that go to college that have uh, really a, a hundred and ten, which is theoretically where you, you people can get into college today with a hundred IQ, which is fucking a joke, right? It means that's not college, right? It means it's a jobs program, and you get the people from one hundred and ten to one hundred and twenty something, right? We call it Island One Twenty. Everybody wants to get to Island 120. And that's where the midwits are. And that's the people who go to college and they get degrees. The problem is those people vastly overestimate their intellectual capacity, right? Vastly overestimate it. And that's right. But then above that, you start to get doctors and engineers and whatever, right? Now, theoretically, you know, Right. You know, do, the average the average IQ of a doctor is actually pretty high. It's like 125, but that's an average, right? So, so, and you have to have a certain personality set traits to get a medical degree, right? It's, it's fucking hard work, right? I'm trying to compliment you here. I appreciate that. I'm I just agree. wondering if I'm just I'm watching your face to see if you agree with me. Um, and then uh, you know, you're non-responsive. You get up into the three into the three categories that matter: math physics, economics, and philosophy. Now, people don't realize that's just a, the division of labor. It's, that, those are the four sciences, right? Physical, uh, math, um, logic, the, the logics, uh, behavioral science, right? Economics, uh, physics, the, the, the physical world, um, engineering, and then verbal logic, right? I mean, you've got applied so, so, math, you've got log, the pure logic, uh, the uh, physical world, the you know the measurement, the physical world, the behavioral world, uh, and the applied sciences, and and um, philosophy, which is really uh, it's really the purpose of philosophy is law. Right? So you get into these things, and you, like those are like adults mostly, right? And you get down to engin engineers; they're adults mostly. It's pretty hard to have a magical view of the world and be an engineer, right? Anywhere, which is applied science, right? But below that, I mean, it's all, <laughs> there's a whole lot of dumb down there and it's really terrifying. And so the problem is you have, um, you have an, a people at the bottom who we've abandoned. Yes. The people, few people who work in the middle, in the middle who are ignored, right? An over a, a, a vociferous group of midwits that are actually incompetent, right? And a, and the people at the top who basically let all this shit happen because it's too much to bother with. And we still make shit happen. I mean, it's just amazing. But you start to wonder every you st when you realize that spectrum is a bell curve. Every point you move in aggregate IQ vastly affects your culture like if you could go from uh where we are just under 100 right to 105 you vastly increase the number of people at the top you go from 115 which is like the average person could actually go to college right instead of really about 10 percent of people are capable of going to college yeah right? Uh, you would have uh, the, you would have a vastly different population. It works the other way too. If if you have a population with an IQ of ninety or eighty five, most of your population can't do basic logical dependency and inference. Right? That's that's the fundamental problem. 
right? Is is and so uh, you actually have even like this um, the Jewish this woman on the Jewish left came out and wrote a book recently, and she's saying, well, it's not a race problem, it's a class problem, and I'm like, well, duh, right? And what's a class problem? A class problem is a demographic problem. What's a demographic problem? It's a rate of reproduction problem. What all problems come down to one factor, the degree of neoteny you've processed in your population and the, the, your success at continuing natural selection. That's all that really matters. And what we talk about, all this other stuff, is just a ways of compensating for the fact that most civilizations and most groups have population demographics unfit for the demands of a world in which logical inference and logical dependence right, are necessary for existence. In other words, you can't have a democracy consisting of people who can't practice logical inference and dependence any more than you can have one that engages in magical thinking. Mm -hmm. Because they're actually not, they're not capable of processing the information. So what has to happen then, if you have a democracy among people who can't process information, you have to resort to lying, or selling. You have to- That's it. Right, that, that's- a perfect segue. So, well, <clears throat> it's a perfect anyway. segue because it goes to this, the, the ideals versus the reals. There we go. Perfect segue, because that's what I was working on. You're so good. I knew, there was, was, I knew there was a method to your madness. So, so, so I let Kurt- We'll get there and then the trap is set. <laughs> <laughs> the um, but it's it is really yeah. I mean, that's a good thing. Ideals. It's the Platonic versus the Aristotelian, and it's like the 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 issue is this is that I looked this up, and this is this is what my my imperfect uh, information processing system. I looked it up. Uh, um, what does it mean in Hebrew? If you say deal, right? Ideal. And it's like, it turns out deal is the, um, means tin. And it's like this, it goes to back to the, the Bronze Age. And it's like this. So what you do, if you're going to run Babylon in the Bronze Age, is you make a deal with all the het men and you bribe them to tell the story that you generate as the ideal that caused the people to fall in line so that the whole pyramid holds together well enough that I can tax the hell out of everybody and stay the king. And that's, the New Deal is rearrangement of the order of it, different story, same process. And that's what we're, we're engaged in. We're, we're, we're suffering from these idealists and they, they, they tend, I, I wrote this this morning, they, they tend to find idealistic bully boys and pay them off and let them knock everybody in line. And it's, it's I, was, I was- That's all they can do. Right, it's not like they have- a it's what there's, works. There's no other choice. That's, That's like, how it works. It's like you can't even enslave that many people. It's too much work. Right? You, you literally can't do it. I mean, it, there was like, I think the hot, total global economy was like $3 million in 1900. Mm. Three, uh, Three trillion dollars in, in inflation adjusted. I mean, the, the fucking world was poor. I can't remember the number off the top of my head, but the entire Roman Empire, you know, was was built was a few b billion, and uh, we're like at a hundred and twenty something billion trillion now, in a hundred years, right? So, uh, so I mean, so we can afford to do a lot of things, right? But but back then, so this is the this is when I say, of course, the Middle East developed fictionalism, which is what you're describing. That's idealist. So, idealist. Right? Well, uh, the Lies. technically the term is technically the term is. Uh, I want to get separate that because that's the, your your intuition is correct, but it's the wrong term. Okay. Um, it's called fictionalism. Okay. Right, which is storytelling that is not. Right? Fictions are a fiction is not necessarily uh, violates the laws of the world or is not. But a, a fictionalism is specifically. Um, it depends on uh, on physical, verbal, or intuitionistic uh, fallacy, right? They're, they're, they're mis 
So, so magic to uh, magic to uh, pseudoscience is the physical. Uh, I, uh, sophistry to idealism is the verbal, right? And uh, the occult to the supernatural and theological is the the intuitionistic, right? And so, like the difference with theology is it combines all of them, right? Theology is like the unified uh, the unified fictionalism. It's the mat fully mature system of fictionalism, just like physics is the full fully mature set of sciences. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, it's obviously to develop that. The fucking IQ of the population is like 83 today, right? I mean, God knows what it was, you know, 4,000 years ago, 5,000, 6,000 years ago, right? Of course they developed fictionalism. I mean, it's the closest, most primitive thing. Why did the Chinese develop wisdom instead? Well, it's because their language is pretty poor for the kind of thought they were doing, right? Why did the Greeks develop idealism? Because our language is, is an action-oriented language. It's, 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 it's based in realism because it's martial, right? So we, it's easier for us to get to idealism. But what did we have to do with it, beginning with uh, Aristotle and Democritus and Epicurus is we tried to get from idealism to realism. So Plato is continuing the storytelling, what we call literary tradition, which I think of as the midwit tradition. And Aristotle, Epicurus and uh, Archimedes and um, who am I forgetting? Aristotle, oh, Democritus, they're, they're and the, really the pre-Socratics, they're, they're developing the other direction, which is it's decidable rather than it's influenceable. Does that make sense? It's judicial rather than educational or coercive. There's two kinds of coercion, right? I can seduce you, inform you, bait you, or I can judge. I can judge, right? Well, militaries can judge, but pol but but polities can't always, right? And to judge, you have to have power. Whereas to do what you excite, you just got to be able to bribe enough people to call themselves priests to go around and do the shit, right? Which look how well that worked for the Egyptians. I mean, they're the fucking map. Holy crap, did they have that industry down? So so you know, I wanted to. I'm sorry I'm riffing on this too long, but the idea that, but I'm trying to tie together the initial direction, which is it's all just fucking demographics and demographics are all just class, si class sizes and class size are all just genetics and genetics is just the degree of suppression of the reproduction of the underclass, which was possible under both Eastern and Western manor manorialism, as well as the climate before that. That's why as you go north, people are more domesticated. And as you go south, people are less domesticated. Domesticated isn't like, I mean that as biologically like your dog, right? I don't mean it as like, <laughs> but the truth is, is a domestication syndrome just retains childhood. So it retains adaptability and reduces aggression, which is the natural output of adulthood. So yeah, you're right. It's you, your idea. I just was trying to say it's when you're saying ideal, um, uh, the the, the uh, you you might want to say literary or verbal, right? Rather than material, right? Verbal rather than physical, right? Because the Greeks did idealism, which is that there's an there is a there's an a set of ideal forms in the universe, like right recipes or prescriptions or uh, architectural models by which the world has to conform this isn't actually too far off but it, it that's technically right. idealism no no but so it's like this it's like the 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 way i understand it is uh, and you call it fictionalisms i like that is uh is it's the generation of a fictional social order that i can sell to the people that's all I'm talking about. And, and it, it doesn't require knowledge. Doesn't require any brains at all. You, you, and it's like this requires no um, adaptation by the individual to it. Because, hey, you're fine like you are. You fit in right like you are. You don't need to adjust your behaviors or anything. And just 
Well, it's actually, they're, they're all promising non-aggression. Yes. Right? Um, in, in exchange, right? And so what they're really doing is it's almost an elaborate system of manners and norms. Yes. Told in stories. But the truth is it does produce non-aggression. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> so, well, this isn't always true. Uh, a Christianity is aggressively non-aggressive, right? Yeah. Uh, right. A Judaism is not. It's polyethical and polylogical. There's inside and out, right? Uh, yes. Judah, right. Islam is all the way to the other extreme. It's 50% of the content, maybe 60% of the content of Islam is how to oppress outsiders. So, so, so you go from a via, a via a negativa, Christianity is the promise of Nas aggression, to uh, via uh, positiva of aggression under Islam. So, so it's interesting to watch the evolution because really uh, Christianity comes, Christianity comes out of old Judaism, but uh, rabbinical Judaism as practiced today comes out of Christianity in, Greek, in Greece. And, um, the, and Islam comes out of Christianity, All right? And so it's just interesting to see the, uh, the spread of Greek th thought and the Jewish, Christian, and Islamic counter-revolutions against that kind of realism. Because the problem with that realism is it's pushing individual accountability down into you, right? It, it, it's, it's pushing ownership for the commons into you. It's pu pushing responsibility into you. But what do Christianity and Judaism and Islam problem? What does Islam produce most of all? It's irresponsibility. God wills it. Right? Praise be Allah. Who do you, it's, your life is foretold. You're, meaning you're not responsible. An absence of agency. Correct. And that's what it teaches, which is why they fell behind, right? Whereas what does uh, Christianity says, I'm only responsible for. And what it really means is I'm only responsible for those things the, mil the aristocracy isn't responsible for. <laughs> right? <laughs> And that's why Christianity worked reasonably well as long as it was the martial aristocracy. It's the same thing that happened in America and in Europe. The minute we lost the monarchies, we lost the military aristocracy in favor of this middle class bullshit. Um, now, what's happened in America is we've, as we at the post war period, where you brought the Jewish intellectuals in who aggressively undermined the martial aristocracy. Whereas before, I mean, you know, you needed, you, it was a good thing to be a general if you were going to be president. Right. Right. Um, right. right. Um, and the military was an honored profession and it generated loyalty. So they undermined our, they undermined every single one of our loyalty institutions. So anyway, did I kill, did I distract from your fuck? You were on a fucking point, but the problem is you give me such good, good opportunity <laughs> to tie things together. So go ahead. Back no, to good. no. So the, the issue is this is, is, uh, yeah, it occurs to me this this goes to our discussion on uh, the relations between the elite and the uh, populace, which has to do with from the Middle East the the the, the elite tend to dominate the uh, the lowers, and this is one of the mechanisms of domination. And, and it's like the the intellectual groups in the 20th century in the United States were specializing critique as a mechanism of making, advancing their own interests. Critique, right? Critique, which is what it's a form Marxism, of, yeah. Marxism, neo Marxism, postmodernism, PC woke, anti white, anti Western, anti male, right? Uh, <clears throat> these, it's a religion, it's a false promise, in other words, uh, using <clears throat> uh, sophistry and pseudoscience, in other words, it's largely denial science denial, as in other words, human difference science denial. It's in other words, it's a war against Darwin and the uh, Darwinian explanation for the success of the West and the genetic, the, uh, the uh, eugenics movement that arose out of it in response to the reproductive consequences of the industrial revolution. 
So they came back to destroy that. They came here to destroy that. And they used blacks as the guilt lever to do it. And women as the sales, as the uh, market of um, least resistance, least resistance, or the people they can most easily seduce into this because it's natural human. Women think they're being compassionate. What they're doing is avoiding the cost of policing. They're not, in other words, women lie to themselves about what they're doing. They're just, they call it being compassionate. What they're actually doing is submitting so they don't have to pay the cost of forcing adaptation of the outgroup. So um, they found those two groups. And the difference is, while they, the reason they switched from Marxism, which was a class phenomenon in Europe, to race here is because it isn't possible, they knew it isn't possible for um, capitalism to save black folk because they're, they know the genetic issues legitimately. And so they, they created a false promise of freedom from the laws of nature. And if you would give them power to create a narrative by social construction that created a lie about reality, but in the end, it's just power, which is kind of humorous because, because the purpose of your European civilization is to deny power. In other words, the, the whole purpose of rule of law, monarchy, uh, uh, nobility, uh, parliament, uh, or et cetera, is, uh, and, and the militia is to deny power. We spent. It's not kind of paradoxical. It's not. It's and, not. And, and so, and so, when they come along and they call that power, yeah, it's the power to deny you power, which you, in other words, the purpose of Western civilization is specifically to deny the emergence of Semitic uh, means of tyranny, which is lying, false promise, uh, storytelling, fictionalism. Right, so the, the, it's just humorous to me that it's like everything they do, they are cu always accusing you of what you're doing, of what they're doing. That is, right? that is the um, that is the common um, statement, and it, it's interesting how true it seems to be, and more so as I study. That I, yeah. that is exactly what's going on. And and what what do women do? They accuse you of what they're doing. And it's like, it's like, have you, have you stopped beating your wife yet? I've never beat my wife. What are you talking about? <laughs> right? So you're, you're, it's just an, or the problem is when somebody does the minute they do that, that's, that's like, that's, we're, we should put our hand forward because it's not got a weapon in it. Right? Right. The minute they do that, they brought, they brought out the weapon. So that's the thing is. We have to go back to the intolerance of if you pull out the female means of warfare, then we're gonna pull out the male means of warfare. You use undermining, right? And we'll use violence. Right? In other words, you just smack each other around. Now, I keep telling you, Russia and Ukraine and Belarus, they're much more civil societies. We used to have a more civil society. That's because every man was a police, was a sheriff, right? And every man was needed to be ready to serve in the militia, which is the army. But this whole professional bureaucracy thing that they promised us that they would bring over from Germany in the post-war period was a complete catastrophe because they didn't realize that you have to have the professional military first to draw from in order to create that professional bureaucracy. The, bureau the professional bureaucracy is, a poor, is an evolution of the military. Otherwise it devolves into either a priesthood like it has here or in the Middle East, or it devolves into a secular priesthood, which is a moralizing priesthood like it has in China and has, has, has at present done here. So, you know, it, if you don't, you, you start with Sovereignty reciprocity, right? We start with the, the institutional production of agency and the total ban on power, except to deny power. It's the same thing for monarchy. What's the purpose of monarchy? It isn't to make law, it's to over, it's to restore law regardless of whatever law there is, right? right? These are the same concepts continuous through Western civilization. 
but we don't we don't think we don't know the first principles of our civilization. So we look at all these civilizations if they're relative when they're not. The rate of evolution, the condition of your people, and the direction of its evolution is just dependent on a very small number of initial factors. You brought up the relationship between the, the people and the aristocracy or the, the ruling class and the people. That's a huge one, but that's driven by geography and competitors, right? Well, you know, we can't go, we can't like, I can look in the face of our history and say, well, we had a tribe of conquerors come into Europe right? And they subdued everybody and made them slaves long enough so that they were kin, right? That's domestication, right? So that's why there's this path in Europe up out of slavery, from slave to serf to freeman to citizen to sovereign. There's a path because it's not about, it's not about, it's not a question of who has power. It's a question of we need numbers, <laughs> Right. Hey, because the only way we can get numbers and the and un, once we have the power to deny power, the only way to maintain that is to increase the numbers of people who wish to maintain the power to deny power. But what's the left doing? They're, the whole stated purpose of Marxism, of neo-Marxism and postmoderns is to obtain a monopoly on power. It's not to deny power. It's to create power. Why? Because they can't handle meritocracy. Yeah, yeah. There's a um, article that I read today, which I will put in the note, which was interesting because it detailed the uh, political situation that we find ourselves in momentarily, and the relationship that the incentive structure has to play with that. And it goes to the financialization, and it's like where the financial power is and how it works operationally between the feds the states and the localities and how it impacts the social structures in the, in the class structures of the uh, population in the United States, which is a worthy read because it, it just, it lays it out simple. You uh, get a chance later, just send me that link and I'll pop. I'll... I put it in the note already. I haven't, I haven't written okay. the note. I'm still writing the notes, but I, I put it in there. first. <clears throat> so no, you got so you got so you got through oh okay i was trying to pick up where you left off oh that's fine that's fine so you went off and you joined this crowd of oh of, of troublemakers and you went off and you had some uh revelations and i loved your revelation about idealism or rather well it didn't come it was interesting because I, I i didn't understand it i guess before this week which is like okay the ideal versus the real because it's like it's all it is it's just it's, it, what's interesting okay because it, it, it like i say i'm going to talk about my crazy processing information processing because it has to do with, um, <laughs> okay. um just educating like, others <laughs> so it goes like this it goes um so you have the ideal you have ideal we have a deal and you have the idol and they get a new deal we're cutting them a deal too and that what it is, it's just the, 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 the turning around of the social order with social construction in, from an idealistic standpoint, which is how do I stay on top? That's the ideal that I prefer, right? What's interesting it is it goes to this other premise of uh, idolatry, right? Which is that the idol that I wish you to worship at is my ideal that I wish to deal. That's and it is. It's just. It's just interesting how you, uh, how you, uh, how you frame this argument. Interesting. Well, it's just it's a it's a, I, I I regard it as some kind of parallel processing plan that I. Yeah, you, you do on. whatever. Doing what we all do is we all have some set of touchstones that have meaning to us, <clears throat> and we have to bridge between our touch whatever touchstones we have and whatever we're trying to get to. In fact, you could argue that that's the purpose of a teacher is to figure out, people think the purpose of a teacher is to spew this stuff out, but it's actually to figure out each person's touchstones that's and it. figure out how to get them from A to B. That's right? it. And that's, that's what a teacher will tell you. I mean, if you go to a modern teacher who's taught uh, lesson planning, uh, lesson planning, that's what it means is they've got some set of your, where they think you are. 
and they're trying to get you to some destination. And all right, and so the, the problem is we don't we think the teacher's just reciting, but they've actually got a group of kids and they've got a distribution of that group of kids and that'll keep in their mind where each person's touchstones are, where they are, and how to move them toward this common understanding when those touchstones are all different. That's right. And so that that's that's why that's the part of aside from the fact that the the nuns don't come in and wrap your knuckles in a ruler when you get out of hand. The world is and, going and, to hell. And you aren't you aren't absolutely terrified of getting caught about not paying for not paying attention, right? In the absence of that, the, that's actually the most of the work. The the real work of a teacher is is not just walking through the curriculum. It's planning the lessons so that they're moving this tribe of semi-domesticated, semi-feral animals, right? From one, so whatever random no shit they have in their heads to some general uh, refinement toward this set of basic understanding. You know, in, in that sense, in, in the sense of that part of it, well, mo modern education understands the science of education. The problem is we have the wrong people teaching it and we have, we're teaching people the wrong things. Yes. Awesome. Um, but, uh, you know, you it's it's I always think it's kind of funny is that get a Ph.D. in education. That's the dumbest fucking thing. I mean, you could teach. There's no evidence that you're a better that any degree improves your ability to teach because either you have the sympathy and empathy and the processing power to move these individuals or you fucking don't. Because learning how to teach, le learning, you know, how to read a curriculum, how to um uh how to uh, create lessons plans how to create uh, student goals and you know you're just trying to that's really what you've got is here's the general outline i've got of stuff to get to uh here's the stuff i gotta work with and here's how i gotta get all those people to that right right all right it, you can teach that in a year and either you can do it or you can't i mean it's an it's really an apprenticeship problem not a, I always say, I have a PhD in education. Well, that just means you had to pay a lot of money in order to, you know, in, a, in, a, in an industry where you're talking about the bottom 16% of high school graduates, right? Uh, which is what they are. Um, you're trying, you who want a cushy job that's free of market competition, right? Uh, that has summers off, right? Even though you get paid for it or not, right? You want to go do this thing of being a mom right, for other people. So there's, you want to be a mom because you don't want to be responsible for the real hard work of running your own kids, right? You go off and run this shit. And they wonder why we get these fucking morons in there who are happy to teach critical race theory and woke shit and, you know, have, a, they have opinions about democracy, or whatever. They, they actually, it's, it's, in, it's, it's terrifying how stupid these people are. When what you, what do you really want teaching? You want somebody's grandmother. Right, you want grandmothers and oh, grandfathers, yeah, yeah. people who have evidence of success in life, because there's no trick to teaching, right? I mean, it's the skill is trivial. It's actually the question of whether you have the general knowledge and sufficient talent. That's it. You know, I would love. To, you know, I've taught a bunch of classes, and I I love teaching like grad student level, right? I mean, I can talk to those people, right? but I could never teach like sixth grade math math. Right. I'd have I, I'd go home and just shoot myself. All right. I mean, there's people who love that shit. So. I will tell you an interesting factoid that I found. I got a, my report card from my employer online. Right. That in the course of my career doing the online work, which is dealing with people. Right. Twenty thousand visits. Holy shit. Dude, right. you're amazing. Well, it's twenty thousand. But it's like so it's an interesting function of it is is it's self-reflection, okay? Whereas I play the doctor all the time and there's maybe 12 things wrong and then very rare outliers. There's 12 things wrong and somebody different playing the part of the person with heart problem number one, number two, or number whatever. And that's how you reflect on it. Anything goes sideways, it's my fault because I didn't manage that correctly. And so that's just constant refinement by grains of sand, right? Yes. It's just entertaining. Uh, well, I mean, it's, enter it's, 
What's fascinating to me is you have the empathy and sympathy to do that job. Uh, I just, I just. We had, that, we had that. We had the test of it yesterday. Okay, this is this is a good segue because we're going to go. Kurt's going to go. I want to make you the host in the meantime. We had the patient yesterday that that is nuts, deaf, in a wheelchair, and we previously fired her from the office, and she came back. And this patient is so crazy, right? Patient was in there for two hours screaming at the staff. I can't hear you. Write it down. It's like. She's screaming at the staff. So I eventually knuckled under and went back there to go deal with her. Because I, I, anyway, she had a cone of paper sticking out her ear that far. And it did not appear to be out of character. I had nothing to even think about it. It's like, that makes sense in this situation. And I gave her a card that says, I'm going to call the sheriff. She says, what can I do? And I'm like, <laughs> That was the beginning of a, of a pretty arduous day that day. But it is like dealing with people. How do you deal with them? And it's like, you have to know when to throw the towel in. Hang on. I got yeah, a I actually, uh, one of those strikes, uh, I got fired from a practice. <laughs> because. Um, it's not you. Uh, for saying the truth. <laughs> yes, that'll do it. Doctors are crazy, man. They're like, no, it, it wasn't the doctor, it was the nurses. Doesn't matter who you're, but the doctors are worse because the doctors, if you don't agree with them, they get mad sometimes. And I like to hear about people getting fired from other doctors. I'm like, okay, that guy's you know, sensitive. There, there are there are meds you can't miss. Right. Right. Your excuse isn't an excuse, right? If you're a doc or a doctor or a nurse, right? If you have a heart condition. And some, and you, you, that needs to get taken care of, right? Now things happen. You, you uh, lose or get your stuff stolen and you need to get it taken care of. There's no, there's no, you can wait, right? Uh, you have to go to the emergency room, right? Or something, which is what they made me do. Cause I've had that happen twice. Hadrian's wall. I'm hiking Hadrian's wall. I lost everything. Oh. I have no idea where. <clears throat> anyway, so and they, and they're like, I'm like, you can't do that. Whatever. That's you know, you understand that you can't. There's no excuse on your side for not handling this problem, right? I mean, uh, you can tell me what I can do to go solve it, but you can't do it. And of course, I'm a little more. <laughs> emphasize i'm a little more emphatic than i am right now and they, they had some woman call me and says well you know we'll take care of it through here but after that we'd like you to find somewhere else to go you didn't need to encourage me this is the same place that didn't diagnose my cancer i was like okay well yeah. that's, that's probably what was coming out right i've i've been trying to go to them for like six years because and they keep telling me you know it, it's in my head or you know i'm working too oh. hard or whatever and i'm like no <laughs> and it's in your head it's very close and i and i'm talking and, and it, the, what i love is that i'm saying i finally lose my temper and say there either you need to tell me mr doolittle we don't know what's wrong with you you need to go find someone else who do, a practice that can or or you need to fix this problem today tell me what's wrong with you and this is, I'm like really anti-naturopathy type people, right? But who comes in to wait, wait, talk to me while I'm waiting, but some one of those crazy naturopath ladies, right? N nurses, right? 20 seconds. Do you know you have a lump on your throat? <laughs> okay, I've been trying to get here for six years. <laughs> you know, and it's like, Three hours later, I'm scheduled for surgery. <laughs> you know? The right people. You know? It's just so exasperating. That's when I went and got a a, a, a concierge physician. I was like, I need, I need to, I need someone with an IQ up in the up in the large range, so that when I'm talking, we know that we're not talking past each other. There you go. Which is a business I recommend all doctors get into. There you go. It is the best way to do business there is. Anyway. There you go. 
Segway. How did I? What You're the on hell? track. You're the host. All right. So, did we cover? Yeah, we're good. So, what did you think of the guys? They're great. I'm looking forward. We're 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 figuring it out. I'm I'm trying to. I'm getting used to what exactly they're. It's resonating on the wavelength that they're operating on. Like getting interacting with them. It's very good. I mean, those guys are all. We've just invited mm -hmm. two more in. It's just, you know, it's, I keep saying it's not, you can want to know it, but there's a certain amount of talent that's needed, right? Uh, native talent that's needed to do it. And uh, uh, these two guys have got it, right? And I don't have to do anything except wait for these guys to appear in the feed somewhere, right? They, it's like, you can't even, you can't recruit them. They have to find, they have to find you. And then they have to demonstrate that they can form transactional sentences in operational language. And when they do that a couple of times, like that's when you've got one. So you just you just watch these guys for six months. Okay. And then you know you've got one. The the problem is it's you know it, it's. It's not just IQ, it's IQ and personality. You have to have a certain, you have to want truth more than you want utility. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, so we just spent an hour talking about fun stuff. I really like the first discussions we had. Somebody will get something out of that. I hope so. Now, um, we were talking about, um, we were working through the series. Right. Yes. So you said you wanted to know the series. And I said, well, if I want to create those posters that we can use to teach people the series. And I want to put in the first put the. The first principles of nature in before the first principles of man, let's go through what these things are so that we can show people that, well, it's not. Um, well, it's not it's not a. You know, it's not a list. It's not like, you know, libertarianism. It's the non-ingression principle. <laughs> Moron, what a bunch of morons. Um, um, uh, which is like necessary, but totally insufficient. Uh, we're trying to create a system of measurement. And so I'm going to share my screen. Yes. That's okay. There we go. First principles. We'll put you up here in the middle so I can see you. Right. Because you're so charming. I want to, you know. Can you see my screen? Yes. What are we creating? Right. So we're creating a universal system of measurement. And we're and as part of that, you have to have a you know, you have to have a paradigm consisting of first principles, vocabulary, right? A, a logic and a grammar. And we're using an operational grammar because it's the most complete grammar that's available. In other words, it's the mo it, it tests every single aspect of human sense perception and reason and action. And then we're, we're starting with, the, with existence. We're working our way up through the first principles, right? Uh, all the way through cooperation, etc., and um, I said, let's start with what we understand, which was I said we'd start with what did I say we start with reciprocity, I had the problem again this week where uh, the disambiguating the word law, like law of nature, yep. Right, um, a logical law, right, and um, man-made law, right, or, and even among man-made law, there are findings of the court under natural law, which is law proper, and then there's there's um, uh, the contracts of the commons, which we could say legislation, regulation, and command, right. right? And in the construction of what we consider regulation command, 
there are regulation, uh, legislation, regulation, command, there are basically four categories of law. There's natural law, there's rights law, there's due process law, and there's arbitrary law, authoritarian law. Right. And so when we say rule of law, right, I mean science, which is rule of law by the natural law consisting of judge discovered law. In other words, I just consider law the, the science of law. And that we, we extend the science of law with contracts of the commons, right? Legislation, regulation. Legislation to say uh, the goal in regulation, how to get there and uh, the limits. And then command, which is the, basically what happens in the military when we're no longer in the market, we're no longer in uh, legislation, but we're in a time of crisis where uh, we just have to work all as one. So uh, these things, so who has rule of law? Well, basically the uh, America did until not, not 1963. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, the, of course, the English invented it as we understand it. But uh, that's the invention of law in the modern state. But of course, realistically, uh, the Germanics, the Romans, the Greeks, and the uh, Proto-Europeans uh, all practice rule of law, which is that there that and this is why there's funny things like. Um, Funny things like uh, ju uh, judicial duels or a uh, demand trial by combat because the first law is sovereignty, right? So, I mean, trial by combat is basically saying, I, wanna, I want somebody to kill me, right? I mean, that's really what it's saying, right? Um, but, and the duel is the same thing, is that you are, the, you can step outside the law, right? Um, but if you do, there's no protection of the law. In other words, the, the group no longer can protect you. And, uh, it, you know, it's open season on you, right? So that's a mean outlaw. You're outside the law. You're outside the protection of the law. Uh, but that means that there's no, that people can do whatever they want with you, right? So that's where this weird, these weird things come from in our history that people make fun of, but they don't understand. If there's no authority, there's only decidability. Then they have to invent these quirky things like let the gods decide, right? Because there's no there's no authority that can decide, right? So um, and the minute you start making decisions that are that are outside your purview, someone's going to kill you because you you started depriving other warriors of their right to sovereignty. We just see that on that origin, it makes a lot of sense. So I thought we'd start with reciprocity because that's there. I didn't start with sovereignty, started with reciprocity. Then we went to um, uh, acquisition, right? And then we went to uh, cooperation. And then we went to the ternary law of cooperation. And we left off at limits to cooperation. So last time we talked about What's the first question of philosophy? Personal philosophy, why don't I commit suicide? What's the second question of philosophy? Why don't I kill you with different stuff? <laughs> I just think these are funny as hell. Why don't I, uh, I and mine, kill you and yours and take your stuff, politics? And the fourth question is uh, how do we organize our people? That's group evolutionary strategy. And what are the limits of tolerance? And that's the limits. And so uh, if you don't, you have to answer those five questions because otherwise you're starting with a presumption rather than a first, first principle. And so those first principles tend to say, you can spend most of your time answering those first principles and that gets away all around all the rest of the, all the rest of the uh, cooperation. Um, what I wanted to talk today about, which is the next thing is demonstrated interest. Because we talk about this, so sovereignty in uh, self-determination by self-determined means, requiring sovereignty and demonstrated interest, and reciprocity of demonstrated interest, 
in display word and deed, right? That's what we talk about. That's the chain of reasoning. So, but what's a demonstrated interest? Because people use, I'm interested in that. Well, that doesn't mean you demonstrated an interest. In law, that means uh, 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 you've performed an act to obtain um, uh, what we would say control, either limited or partial control of something, uh, uh, so something that's of value to you, because that's why you're doing it. You, you've performed an action that bore a cost, or you've foregone an opportunity and in doing so paired a, born a cost, right? So you have both the via positiva of paying the cost and the via negativa of paying the opportunity cost of not taking advantage of an opportunity. Right. So that means that the most of the time, most of the taxes you and I pay are not the taxes we directly pay, they're the taxes of foregoing opportunity for self-interest. So uh, the thing, so uh, so that's what demonstrated interest means. Now, and you're trying to get that because you're trying. What we say an interest is an interest means that you're excluding others from it. Right. Right. So you've demonstrated a cost to exclude others from something. The, right. right. Now the somebody say, well, that's property. Well, I mean. Property is the end is the is the label we give to that what results from that process plus our reciprocal insurance of it. Well, I mean, I may possess the demonstrated interest, but I may not have possession of it. Right? I may have possession of it, but it's not insured. Right? I have to defend it myself. I can agree with you, and I will share defense of something. Right? So that's consensual property. And then we can create an, uh, an, an insurer, which is somebody actually is insuring our property. And so the institution of property is constructed by as a commons, which is what, and when you say that it make, will make you, your libertarians start to cry. Right. 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 So, uh, uh, now, of those things that we demonstrate an interest in and seek to demonstrate an interest, defend, uh, develop alliances of defense, and develop institutions of insurance, right? Uh, of that sequence, uh, what is it that we seek to acquire? Make sense? Right. Now there's there's a, there's some obvious ones here, right? Which are life. Right. Action. Right. Bar two bars in my way. So your life, your body, your genes, your memory, mind, attention, your time and your actions and your stimulation experience, right? Those are things that are, uh, that are of the self. I was just trying to cover the spectrum uh, of uh, mind, body, action and experience, right? You were to defend those interests. It's not really hard to understand those things, right? No. <laughs> um, the, the thing here is time. This is the one I try to emphasize. Um, in, in, in simple terms, the reductive result is you're trying to buy time. 
And that's important. That's good. That shows up everywhere. Okay, I keep, I'm going to lose my spot every, every time. Oh, my. Uh, Need to open up a couple more tabs. Well, I just got to remember it's the one above videos. <laughs> you go. I'm, I'm doing that too. <laughs> right. And so the second one is interpersonal relationships, right? Mates, children, and kinship relations. We show this through all sorts of kinship bias. What did you call it the other day? Genetic distance? Somebody did. We, uh, we demonstrate, it's very easy to show kin selection in all sorts of such situations. Oh. Is that we bias, we bias everything by genetic distance. The next is the social, the social. Right, reputation, status, and class. Now, we, you and I have discussed this in depth elsewhere in the courseware, but um, uh, you have self image is to help you maintain the will to act. Uh, reputation should come next, which is um, the discounts you have upon others or others. And status is the general signals that you give off regardless of whether people know you or not. Right? So those things provide discounts. Right? And then you, whether we like it or not, we all have a social, sexual, economic, political, and military market value. So uh, uh, those things are uh, properties that we value highly right. because each of them provides discount on cooperation. This, and this is the hard part that cooperation is a scarce good. Uh, the thing I try to bring about relationships, although it may not apply to every relationship, <laughs> is that technically when you say you get married, you're putting that other person ahead of everyone else. Right. Right. So when I'm in a business, if I have a business partner, his interests come ahead of mine. And you exchange that, right? And then you compromise. And it's that that creates the durable relationship. But how, A, how hard is that to get? Fucking hard, right? Uh, how, how hard to get yourself to be important to somebody other than mom. That's right. <laughs> Sounds easy. What? It's not. It's not easy. It's, it's easy as it sounds quite difficult and that's what loneliness comes from right it, you're not only obtaining information but nobody gives a shit about you right and nobody will give you priority because attention is a commodity right it's a valuable commodity cooperation is a value commodity and you know, so we value these things because they give an asset so obviously i can't do much without time which means myself my ability to act survive and act. I, uh, I, my first priority is always going to be kin, right? Because that's a natural alliance. And we demonstrate that regardless of our different contexts. The next one is our social relations. You notice I haven't talked about much physical here. I haven't got there yet. Right? These are all things that provide discounts on the ability to make use of time. Because what's cooperation? Cooperation is a reduction in the cost of time, right? Which one, this one or that one? That's it, above the V. Above the V. And above the gab. Right. We're still not in anything physical. 
we've got sustainable patterns of association, cooperation, reproduction, production distributions, friends, acquaintances, neighbors, cooperative relations, commercial relations, political relations, military relations. So we've gone, we've gone now to, now we've got, we've not only want the opportunity to get a discount, we want to talk about captured discounts. Right? Yeah. So in this, go ahead. No, I'm good. So, so this is what we call existential or natural interests. I don't know I keep screwing this up. You want to tell me? Over the A. I don't think they're moving. So those I call those existential or natural interests. In right. other words, you just by the virtue of existing, you know, as a human being. Right? But then we have start to have other interests. Figured out the word. What? Under item two of nepotism. Oh well, that, that nepotistic interests. It's a, yeah, it's nepotism. Is is genetic distance interest by genetic distance? All right. So, but those are so all of those have to do with what? Just being here, time. Um, and I keep saying the economic, the basis of the universe, the base of economics is a defeat of time by the capture of free energy that's converted into stable relations with weak result is mass that produces a storage of energy, of, of complex energy available for our use, right? So I, I, well, it's about money. The economy is about money. Actually, no, money is just to store time. It's like any other thing. The thing about money is it's commensurable, but it's still just a store of time. And that's the problem, right? That's why it's so hard for people to understand that, my, that you're in my time is frankly more valuable than someone else's time, right? How much you can get for it in the marketplace, right? Right, and so that's why, that's what we mean by, uh, uh, by um, uh, when we say value is subjective, it's bi-directional. What is valuable to you is, is dependent upon the value of your time, right? Your value of your time. Well, I mean, for some of us, every fucking, I mean, I can tell you when running an international company, you know, if I could get a nap in the afternoon for 20 minutes, that was precious to me, right? Because it meant I could get through the rest of the day, right? Or when I was fit enough to run, I would go out and run for instead of having lunch, right? Because I could the oxygenation would get me through the day. Well, right. how valuable is your time? You know, what's the value of of Elon Musk's time right now? Wow. I mean, you can basically measure it by his wealth, right? Right. So you know, uh, so you know, when a, a friend of mine did um, Reagan's ca calendar. Now the, the software for like, we all have calendars today scheduling, but this is back in the Reagan years. So a friend of mine wrote the software for the Reagan's calendar. And he said, well, Reagan's time was scheduled in two minute intervals. Oh my. Can you imagine your life is broken in to two minute intervals? Your ushers usher you around, man. I mean, I can't, I mean, that's, I was, I could never do that job. I just can't change context that many times in one day, I'd have a nervous breakdown by day three. You just wouldn't be able to do it. Um, so, you know, what's your value of your time? Well, our time is different. You know what, the guy who's sitting on the, you know, I'm gonna go over, I know, I know Turkey, right? So there's places in Turkey, there's a bunch of guys sitting outside, right, in the sun, and they're smoking their hand-rolled fucking cigarette drinking tea and watching the world go by. What's the value of their time? But what's, 
the problem is what's the maximum return they can get on their time. You know, you got a guy who's got a lot of assets, a lot of IQ points, a lot of relationships, a lot of dependencies. I mean, if you can get two minutes of his time to say yes, I think it'd change the fucking world. So I'm trying to get it down to the point always across foundation is time. So now let's go on to the second category of interest. Did I just screw that up? I did. So we go from Gab to videos. Yes. And we go to obtained interests. So, yeah, yay, obtained interests, right? So we had existential, now obtained. So these are things, these are things that um, are existential or natural, but these are things we have to produce. And so an obtained interest is done by bearing the cost of opportunity, time, effort, and resources to obtain an interest, meaning some exclusivity of use without imposing the previously born costs of others. So what are those? How do I keep screwing this up? Right above the A from Gab. Okay. So, we all know what Hayek called several property, which means um, uh, things we can have monopoly over use over. Our favorite coffee cups, it's mine, damn it. Right. Right, that's several property. Right, my car is several property. It means I can have a personal monopoly, a severed interest, right? We can have fractional interests. Now there are, uh, this falls into, to, uh, we call it shareholder or fractional interests. So uh, you and I can share an interest in something. We can hold this property in common. Now this can exist two ways undifferentiated, we don't fucking know what the distribution is, right? Okay. Uh, then there you can exist it in, in a differentiated, like we each get um, uh, 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 we each are equally prohibited from consuming it, right? right? In other words, so we're gonna share this lawnmower. We both can use the lawnmower, right? But if you break the lawn more, then you got to fix it, right? That, that's an interesting example of a, right. a simple example. But you can also have um, uh, quantified. So I have, uh, not only not do we have equal shares, right? But not only do we have equal shares, but they are, but you have individual responsibility. But we can have quantified shares, like we have shares of stock. Right. So a vote, is a equal equal share in a democracy, and an economic democracy, it's not. So you can have a, right, and so the same thing is shares. I can have shares. Well, in the case of commons, well, I didn't get to that yet, did I? No, I didn't get to. That. I'll, I'll get to that later. Then you can have title interests, which is um, uh, a uh, access to a weight and measure. Right. Or um, so in other words, it's not a physical thing. It's basically uh, a trademark or a brand. Right. Um, whereas what you're doing is denying people the ability to consume an, an abstract asset in which you've invested. So a trademark and a brand, they're a weight and measure. In other words, uh, Gucci bags are Gucci bags. I've bought a Gucci bag. Boy, do you get laid when you buy a Gucci bag for a girl. I'm telling you, it, there's nothing like it. Has to be the real thing. I mean, these are like four or $5,000 purses, you know, easy, right? But well, boy, do you, does it pay? That's, that's so far, so far, Gucci bags have the highest return. I mean, Dolce Gabbana dresses, I can tell you, 
they provide a high return. But Gucci bags, they like last because they use them every day. I'm trying to get a good reaction out of you. And good, man. It's like this. The, the um, What's funny is weights and measures. It's like I wouldn't have thought of trademarks and brands, but it is. It's like this. It's like a pound is a pound, and it cannot be a half a pound or yeah. three pounds. It doesn't make sense. It has to be what it is as a measure. Well, it, it's, it's the abstract version of a reputation, right? A, a title, a trademark and a brand and anything that's a title interest like that, an abstract interest. What's funny is Armstrong talks about this, which is uh, the, uh, it's the premium on coins that are actually the coin they say they are. Yes, <laughs> which is, which is, it's, it's a bit bizarre thing. It's like he shows these coins because he collects coins because you know it's the 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 uh, sport of kings, I guess, right? The, but you see these Byzantine gold coins, and then you see the Indian counterfeit, which is like it's it's similar, but it's like different art, right? And it's like the but they the premium on the on the coin of the realm which is interesting brands and, you know it, it's it's fascinating and then you get to the coin clipping right where they go around that's why we have serrated edges on our coins right. Right? is uh is they get the coin clippers so they trim a little bit off each one and you know oh fuck anyway so uh so a title interest technically speaking i i try to avoid having this but a copyright is a title interest a patent is a title interest. Now, um, I'm actually pretty hostile to copyrights and um, I'm, I'm probably pretty, like a typical libertarian, hostile to copyrights, but not hostile to creative commons protections, right? In other words, you, copying is one thing, copying for money is something else, right? So. Um, because that violates um, productivity. In other words, you gained without productive contribution. Um, and the same thing is for uh, patents. The difference is uh, patenting on everything is pretty stupid, right? I mean, trademarks is, is sufficient, right? If, if I'm violating your trademark, that's a, a violation of weight and measure. But the idea that, you know, so back in the day, somebody could patent a menu structure on an, on an application, right? Software product, I've found that. I mean, I got a patent for some things that I, you know, I, I got the patent because of my, you know, the, the, the company said you had to get a patent, but I'm like, this is, this is ass clown material. We can't patent this, you know? It's just fucking design, right? And so, um, you know, if your design is a brand, that's one thing. Right. Right? I mean, right. But if your design is just, you know, there's only four ways of doing this and you can't patent the four ways of doing it. Right. I mean, <laughs> right. And, and besides the fact that there's no the, the invented, the invention is purely aesthetic. Right. It's not uh, it's not uh, right. But, you know, there's no. But if you talk about R&B, like chemical patents on medicines, basic technology. That's just a way of paying for, right? It's off the book investment right? for, for risk. So you're basically saying we're going to, as a public, finance risk taking, right? That's all it is. So I'm not against patents. I'm just against patents on fucking everything, right? I mean, there's, if, put it this way, if it's not strategic, that's, it's a, right? It, that it needs to be a trademark and a weight, you know, weight and measure. Because otherwise, you're just a grifter. And it's the same thing. Is there, there's a creative commons is enough, right? Uh, copying, in other words, copying something that because I can, you know, it's like if I could, it's like copying right a, a birdhouse design that I can build out of planks of wood in my backyard. That's because I've seen this actually try to happen, which is, I mean, you wouldn't believe. You wouldn't believe. I, I don't know how people work in the patent office and say same, <laughs> but the stuff people try to patent, it's like, you know, a sixth grader could have this, you can do this by accident, right? And then try to patent it. You know, it's like, well, there's no specialty here. I can look at the thing, understand it and copy it out of fucking two by fours, right? I mean, there's no patent to be had here because there's no, there's no strategic investment 
you know, of, of capital here. You just stumbled upon something, right? That's just stupid. And so, but on the other hand, the, what happens is once we have this ridiculous patent system, we guys like Paul Allen, who I don't, who I'm related to, and I don't want to dismiss too much, but uh, Paul Allen would, was building the patent troll business. Now I've been, I've been attacked by patent trolls all the time. Of course, I just ignore them. You know, if they want to, they want to pay the cost of actually trying to, but there's, that's all, they're just trying to, it, they're leeches, right? It's the same thing for prohibiting the guys, the old adage about the guys who invented tires that would never wear out and they bought the patent that locked it away, which it's become such myth now. I don't even know if it's based in truth. You're right. You wonder about these things, uh, uh, you know, like the ma magic machine that allows you to get 150 miles to the gallon of gas. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, it, it, it's these things. There's, they're just, these things are, are rent seekings. They're not, uh, they're not off book R and D. I mean, one of the beautiful things about America is there's no blame for failure, right? Right. There's no blame. Just, they, you get, if you try to do something great and you fail, good job, good job. You tried, right? Every other culture, they punish you. Huh. So uh, then you have artificial interests, uh, excuse me, which are, which are patents and copyrights and grants of license. My favorite one being letters of Mark. I just love the idea that you get to be a state licensed pirate. That yes. is just, that's. Yes. And we don't use that shit. That's good stuff. I mean, can you imagine? Wait, wait, wait. Let's just say it's it's out of use. It's, it's out of use. It's certainly in not in fashion momentarily. No, it's gonna happen again though. I mean, can you imagine what would happen if private votes were able to go around and hunt hunt down Somali pirates? There wouldn't be any Somali pirates because. It's too many too many guys that think it, it was basically equivalent to going on a going on a hunting trip for open three months. Season, brother. Well, it's open season. So we have several shareholder title and art. It's interesting. I, 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 that's very interesting. Okay, I'm good. Go right. back to above the V. Yes, above, above the, the v. v. Yes, you're so good. Next, we get into the interesting, which are commons. The commons. Yes. And of course, those of you who follow me for a while, or those of you who are just getting, uh, statistically speaking, the way you identify my work out of everyone else's is the number of uses of the word commons. That's right. It is like, it's like it's <laughs> it shows up in words, it's like <laughs> <laughs> every word cloud. <laughs> you get a word cloud of, that you know, of you put on the twenty thousand pages of articles that I've written, something like that. You yeah. put it on there. The, it's like in the top five. Like it's right after the. <laughs> <laughs> and I said that that's what I think of. We don't think of it that way because we talk about a Western civilization as being individualistic, which is false. It's sovereignarian. But the purpose of sovereignarian is to produce commons. The way we compete is we help compete others in the production of commons. We don't think of our high trust polity, our rule of law, our prohibition on authority. Or, 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 we don't think of those things as or, or property rights. We don't think of those things as commons. They're commons, right? The things we don't do, we pay the cost of not doing. That's right. right. And so uh, Western civilization excels at producing commons, uh, it, in other words, the common good. So uh, I try to get people to think about commons. You'll find that among our people, they'll, they'll use it all the time because they understand the relationship that, that the way we produce all these commons is we start as a military, military that is self-organizing, or that it's high cost, it's voluntary, and this produces, uh, the only way to preserve that is a, a self-determination among those warriors is by sovereignty, reciprocity, truth, duty, responsibility, etc. So um, you have common interests, and I'm going to, they're fall into two categories. I'm going to pull them all out together. Yes. Okay. Common interest. Do I want to do all this? I don't. I'm going to get the first three. The A and Gab. There you go. Yay. Boy, you're pretty smart. Just...
So. What am I doing wrong here? You gotta go again. Boom, boom. There you go. There's something wrong here, so that's what it is. Look back up there. All right. So <clears throat> now, so we've gone through existential interests, interests we've obtained, interests we share in common. And those are things like the formal physical commons, like our territory, our resources, our natural waterways, um, our improvements in infrastructure, right? Buildings, halls, markets, squares, parks, and monuments. I specifically bring out monuments because one of the first popular pieces I did was that a monument is a demonstration of improvement. And it, you know, a church is basically our common European monument or castle. These improvements, these capital investments are demonstration of improvement in the territory. They're a demonstrated interest. So the minute you start building monuments, what you've said is, I, can't I have improved the land, right? I've demonstrated an interest. Right. It's very different from being a tribal migrant where you're a parasite upon the land. Whereas what you've said is I've improved the land and in doing so I've produced surpluses sufficient that I can produce commons, sufficient that I can demonstrate um, the results of producing commons in a monument, right? So monuments are, it's like flying a flag over a troop, right? I mean, it's like, you're saying this is mine. No, it's this just reminding what, me of these Marxists going after the monuments. That's exactly what they're doing. And they're also undermining the fact that all of our monuments are actually demonstrations of loyalty. And so they're undermining our loyalty, which is really what they object to. It's closing all these links. All right, so we have uh, physical interests. We have uh, institutional interests. And just like we have fractional institutions and interests in our commons, our common physical assets, we have common uh, fractional interests in our uh, institutional interests. And that can include our formal institutions, right? Like uh, religion, education, banking, treasury, government laws and courts. It can take place in our strategic or uh, st strategic group evolutionary strategy uh, uh, assets like our strategy, myths, traditions, grammars, arguments, faith, truth, literature, et cetera. And we have informal institutions, right. which are norms, morals, ethics, manners, and habits, uh, habits. And we have informational institutions, which is our knowledge, skills, information, technology, et cetera. So, do, so an interesting thing here is when we talk about an economy, what the fuck are we measuring? It's very limited. When, what, what is the, re, if our competitive advantage is the production of commons, which is the most important commons that we have? That one. Of course, that's our competitive advantage, our culture. And then we have the obvious one, the human capital fractional interests, right? We have our, our, our existing indoctrination, skills, uh, trust, um, population distribution, our genome. We don't account for that, yet, What's more determinant of our outcome than anything else? The demographic distribution. Given our demographic distribution, what's more determinant of our success than anything else? Our, our, in, our, our uh, informal or institutions of cultural production. What, can, what do we need in order to produce commons and human capital? We need control. We need control of physical territory and our assets. Right? So we have to have that, to have that, to have that, because that is our competitive advantage. Because that produces that. I'm, I'm, you're silent, so I'm assuming I'm like, you're- So it's interesting, because it's like the, there's a, 
it's it has to do with it. There's a time preference embedded in there that's quite interesting to me. Okay, let's talk about that. It's a really good insight. The third element is now. That's current active active functioning elements. The second element is is like metaphysical. It's like a future to be or will be. And the, the first one is was, which is- I love you. This is, this is the way I do it. Yes, yes. I didn't, I couldn't cogitate that. No, you got it, but you saw it. Right? So, so this is, this continues the cycle, right? Thank you for pulling that out. I just never occurred to me to say that. That's really good. And then we have opportunity interests. This is the next stage. This is all future, future. I want to make sure. Yeah, that's a weird thing. There we go. This is the hard one to get. Uh, maybe it isn't for the audience by now because they've been following us, but that's why I'm paying so much attention to time. Right? Time. Time. So up here, I said, it's so important to say it's time, right? What are these things doing? They're providing us discounts on time. What are these things doing? They're storing time, right? What are these things doing? They're storing time for the group, right? This is a this is a huge investment, continuous, ongoing investment, most of which is provided by the family. Right. What's the result, and what does that buy us? What we're doing is we get we have common opportunity interests, so. Um, what happens is when we come closer together in proximity, right? Um, we, uh, in fact, I'm trying to avoid reading this. So we tend to think about things, right? And I tried to get us away from just things, right? So there's things right? There are uh, institutions and there's information, but there's also opportunity. So just like I said, you can bear a cost by doing something or that would, that demonstrates an interest or not doing something. But every time you don't steal something, you're paying a cost, right? You're paying a demonstrated interest. So that's a positive and negative. Well, the same thing is for opportunities. When we come together in a group, right, and we protect, we provide sovereignty and reciprocity to one another, we're creating more opportunities. The closer we get together, the more we reduce the time cost, in other words, opportunity cost, and the more trust we develop and reciprocity institutions we develop, we, the, more, um, uh, the more we reduce transaction costs. <clears throat> so um, the problem is that this is where you go into well sitting. Yes. Right. In the danger of well sitting, or it's the danger of um, stake is of uh, obtaining a benefit for which you haven't paid a cost. The obvious one is view. Is wrench a view? Or in other words, oh, right. Nice. You know, but I was here first. You were, but you didn't. You didn't settle all the fucking land of the horizon. My dad said it this way: He's like, you can't buy everything you see. Yes. <laughs> you know, on the other hand, if I buy a house on a hill overlooking a lake, right? We can, we can form in a polity some particular thing. You can't block anyone else's view, pre-existing view, right? This is or some percentage of it, right? Which there's always some asshole, 
right? That wants to steal, right? But you always get, I, uh, this is, the reason this is in the forefront is that uh, I live in Bellevue. Right. And there's Bellevue and Kirkland and Redmond and Seattle, right? The, there's our lakes with hillsides. So if you go down to Gates's place, right? It's right, right. on the water, right? And it's this fucking compound. But so we have all these lakes, right? Uh, Sammamish and whatever there, all the way to the lakes and the sound and everything that have hills on them where people want their fucking views. So it's like every fucking drama queen yeah. wants to go into an old, an older neighborhood and steal someone's fucking view. It's like, and, and because, you know, money makes you an arrogant prick, right? And, you know, that part of the country has given away more money to its employees than anywhere else. So you get a lot of young, ill-mannered, arrogant pricks that get a lot of money and try to, because Microsoft is a dysfunctional organization that, that industrial and institutionalizes uh, maladaptive behavior, and it gets expressed in the population. Well, it's not quite the same now, but it was fucking pain in the ass in the 90s and all those. Um, so anyway, that's why it's in the front of my mind is because everybody's trying to steal everybody's goddamn view, you know. Frustrating. Anyway, so that's an example of it's an undemonstrated interest. You may have been gaining a benefit, but you didn't secure an interest. What you can do, of course, is buy the house in front of you, right, and secure that interest. You can buy the air rights over all the houses in front of you. And this is what happens in skyscrapers, right? You buy the air rights. Anyway, so, uh, so in other words, you have to actually demonstrate an interest. So the point of this paragraph, this idea, is that when we create a polity, we create opportunity. But until you've actually borne a cost, you haven't paid for that opportunity created by the group. This is what's important in falsifying libertarian bullshit, right? Is that the, the very existence of the group, its army and its insurance is what makes those things possible. And so you're, uh, you're, uh, uh, you always pay a cost of commons in order to create an opportunity and you don't have the right to an opportunity unless it's been taken, unless it's been seized. We don't know that until a voluntary exchange has been taken. So if we come together, we come to a market and you sell pig's feet and I sell pig's feet. I just couldn't think of anything funnier than the moment. Right. right? And we're both selling pig's feet. You don't have a right to sell pigs anymore. Right. In other words, if you want to price them at a dollar a pound and I want to price them 50 percent a pound. If I win, then the comp then the group wins. In other words, the whole point of creating oper of the group producing the commons of opportunity that we call a marketplace is to benefit the group. Right. Right. And so the group benefits from the competition of seeking the lowest, the highest, the, the, the best quality and volume distribution that can be had. So this is why people say, oh, but I have right. Actually, no, the group has created <laughs> this thing. There are no rights until you get a community to produce them. You can need rights. You can want rights. You can want privileges. You can want rents. You can want thefts. <laughs> but the group has to produce them somehow. Right. So when we talk about demonstrated interests, we go from the uh, existential to the obtained to the common. Um, uh, and within the common, we go from the physical to the institutional to the human capital to the opportunity. And you notice that those are com complete disambiguations of the spectrum of human demonstrated interests. Now, have I enumerated every demonstrated interest there? No, but they're categories, and I've enumerated all the categories. Right? And I've done both the via negativa and the via positiva. So when we say 
we want to know reciprocity. We want to know demonstrated interest. These are series you can learn. Really all you've got to know is the top level, right? Existential, obtained, common, yep. and that's it, right? All right, and once you have that, you know, well, it's a, it's a demonstrated interest. And did you demonstrate it? Well, you know, did you actually pay the cost in competition with others for paying the cost? Because it's not about you. The reason it's individualism exists or sovereignty exists is because the optimum means of producing commons. <laughs> it's not so you're happy and fulfilled, right? You will get happier and more fulfilled because of the commons, but uh, because we created those commons than you will in other circumstances. That's quite funny because it is, it, 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 it's not the, uh, the, the, the Telios generated that, but it was it was incidental. Correct, and so that's the problem with the via positiva, right? We we by creating these narratives, we lose the first principles. Like, so the 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 incredible extraordinary correspondence between the Western group evolutionary strategy yeah. and the physics of the universe. Yes, well, it's a glorious accident. Yes. But it is a glorious accident. And it, cultures aren't relative. They're absolutely different. And they're absolutely superior and inferior. Measurably so. Measurably so. It's not an opinion. I mean, if we get a bunch of rats and one can run faster than the other, it's objective. Well, some civilizations go faster than the others. What's go faster means? They've eliminated more error. We think of it as gain more knowledge. But it's that we've eliminated more ignorance, error, bias, and deceit. Because saying true. it's knowledge is a via positiva that masks the problem. The problem is the elimination of ignorance, error, bias, wishful thinking, <laughs> seduction, right? Uh, suggestion, obscurantism, fictions, fictionalisms, denials, deceits, and uh, baiting into hazards. That's the errors. This, like this, if you, it goes like this. I'm going to tie this back to the uh, work we were just doing, which is the wastes of time. <laughs> yes. Just, you're wasting your time, man. What are you doing? <laughs> right? Well, and, and that's the thing when people say incentive, what are they really saying? They're saying provide higher returns on your time. That's it. That's what incentive means is they're providing you in, uh, incentive to produce higher returns on your time. That's Whereas, right. what, you know, most of us want to sit in our fucking fat asses, pizza in one hand, beer in the other, football game in front of you. Right? But, the, you know, and that's fine as a respite for making good use of your time. If you've bought that time with the productivity other time, that's fine. But, that's you know. That's right. Right. It comes down to what? You could, you could paint that wall yourself but it's not worth the time. There's a guy that it is worth his time and you can pay him by doing something else with you. Yeah. When I was a teenager, I'd fix my car. I would put my own water pump in, change my own radiator fluid, change my own oil, change my own spark plugs. I'd fix my own dents. Wow, right? that's awesome. You know, you know uh, when, when, I was, when I didn't have any money, I'd, re I'd repair my own faucets. Right. I'd fix my own. I changed my own outlets. Right. I mean, it's not stuff that I don't know how to do. I mean, I, you know, I grew up in one of those time periods where if dad was doing it, you were going to fucking learn it, too. <laughs> Which, OK. Aside from the fact that doing it with him, he was an asshole, was uh, was unpleasant. You know, I fixed it. I remember awing my second grade teacher when I fixed the sink in the back of the room uh, and she, she was like horrified. And it's like why it's fucking simple right um you know second grade so fix the fix the plumbing and the sink in the back of the back of the room it's just some things that were detached in the kitchen. but once you've watched somebody put in three your dad's made you sit there through it right it's not hard once your dad's told you to change a tire how to change the oil right 
you know, how to change the spark plugs, how an engine works, right? What the brakes do, how the brake fluid works, what's the problem, why a transmission is a problem. You know, you learn all these things, how to wire a house, you know, I mean, I understood how to wire a house, right? I mean, you, but you do all these things as a kid. It's basically, that's what apprenticeship is for kids, right? It's, it's doing that stuff around the house. So you basically get a grasp of, you know, how to use tools. Work. But the problem is, you re- if you're, at least for me, I got to make it a point where I couldn't afford the time. Right, right. It, 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 I'd rather pay you. I, the thing might cost me $1,000 to do myself, but it's cheaper to pay $3,500 or $5,000 to you to do the thing because I can't afford that three days. That's it. I just can't afford it. Because the, this other stuff is going on. And, and the worst problem is when you're, people don't understand what it's like to be one of these billionaires that lives on a fucking yacht. I mean, how you think it's great, but the life actually sucks, right? Because when do you get a chance to have a free moment in your head? Right. Right. And why do you, why do you want some, some paid gratification? You know why? Because you don't have to fucking think about it. Right. And so what you're actually looking for is a break. Right. From the content. Because, you know, the, like my friend Todd said to me, at one point, the reason people can't understand is the thing that people can't understand is how hard you work. Right. I mean, it's not just me. Anybody who runs a business over a hundred million dollars. Right. I mean, if, if, if it's a real, in other words, if it doesn't have all these privileges of rent seeking, Right. If you're actually in a competitive space, right, really work. Right? And for me, I build growth companies. Right. So I don't build profit companies. I build growth companies because that's what I'm trying to do is turn them. Right. So, you know, I'm building this company. You, you don't you don't have the thing you want is fucking peace of mind because you're basically work seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Right. And that's all you do. And you just want fucking peace of mind. No, I don't look at these. You know, I look at these billionaire like what's his name? Abramov or whatever it is. And Russian guy, and like the amount of shit that has to go through his head in a single day. Yeah. You know, it's it, you know we think it, being the president is a hard job because you things matter. But you know the guy, the guy who screwed up Toyota, what's his name? I remember his name, right? Uh, you know the amount of shit that guy was processing every day, right? You know, you just the average people think that these guys are privileged. You just can't understand that they're super athletes. That's right. And it, the, it's interesting because it, we, we talk about the uh, opportunities, right? And proximity, generating more opportunity and discounts on opportunity. And it's like, there's too much opportunity. They're, That's right. They're distracting my attention. Yep. And it's like, I came to this, I, 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 this week was particularly rough on me. I was kind of like walking. I'm like, I, I, I think I've hit the limit of my processing capacity. I, my <laughs> memory is full. I'm like, that's unusual. Wow. I need a break. Right. Yeah. And that's okay. So that's why you get on your yacht and go away because you got to get away from all the people that are bugging me. Well, no, that's, that's why they have yachts because you can't fucking get to it. Right. Right. You, you take and, and it's funny the way yachts are 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 built. Right. Because the laws, you can't have too many people on them. You can take like 15 people. Right. But what you really want is you've got your security and your assistant and your a few family members and the few guys you want to talk shit with. Right. Right. And you hire, you know, and the, the crews are amazing. And, what a fucking job. I can't, I mean, people want to be in that business to do that shit. And I'm like, you're, you're out of your, your mind. It's like being an air fucking airplane pilot. You know, I just right. can't understand why you want that job. Right. That's a, ugh, it's a glorious job. It's high status. I get to be out of the, yeah. You get to deal with fucking crazy because a captain of a yacht like that size, he's CEO. That's right. Make except, it work. except that you're, you got one fucking customer that can get pissed off at you really easily. Right. And you've got governments to deal with and God <laughs> knows what. And it's one goddamn thing after another. And you forget that running these billion dollar yachts is like, you know, it's running a billion dollar business, right? Because you've got ports and fuel consumption and energy provision and re- water filtration and energy generation. And all like There's that. a lot of systems that can go sideways. You know, and then you're talking about people who the reason they're really good 
is they have zero tolerance, <laughs> right? And, and they notice everything. <laughs> And they don't, and they, it bothers them when they had to notice, right? That means you failed, right? And so, you know, uh, yeah. And, and so, you know, I, I, it's like I don't. I always look at this like, you know, I know, I know Gates. You know, I know Gates. Okay, right? I don't like know him as a friend, but I know enough about. Him. And yeah, he's gone off, whatever. But it's not. It's like I know these guys, and there's not a. They're not miraculous to me. They're just guys that I've been in meetings with, right? And, you know, the amount of shit they have to deal with every day, you just can't imagine, right? It, and that's the reason I didn't build public companies is because I understand that in a private company, there's a level of shit you've got to put up with, but right. at least at least it's just you, your, your employees, your investors, and your customers, right? The government exactly. isn't too much involved. The minute you're in a public company, it's like newspapers and right, and and now you've got retail investors and you've got uh, gossip columnists and you've got the amount of paperwork that you've got to handle today and over which you're supposed to have responsibility, but informationally you you can't possibly know that much, right? You, you just can't, right? And so you know, I, I look at this job like. You know, it's like everybody wants to be the boss until they have the responsibility and workload of the boss. That's right. Right. And then you realize that what you're doing most of the time is you're just better at trying to keep your head above water. That's right. Than everybody else. Makes me crazy. It fucking ruined my health. And I actually liked it. Right. All right, we covered. We've been processing. We've been working through the the um, the uh, what you would call the series. We got to demonstrated interests um, today. So we've gone through reciprocity, acquisition, um, uh, uh, cooperation, ternary logical cooperation, demonstrated interests. I mentioned the sequence of developing institutions that make property possible and opportunities. Yes. And I went through it verbally, but I didn't write it down. So next time we'll, we'll cover that. Um, and what do we have to go back here? I think. I think we'll go into organ, then we'll go in from cooperation to organizations. And then I have to decide, I think we'll go back and do uh, cognitive science. Okay. And then we'll do truth. It's very hard to do. It's hard to do this unless you know neurology. I wouldn't be surprised from what I understand that we have discussed it a little bit before. So next time we'll just do the evolution of property, the evolution of elites and institutions, classes, families, right? The whole thing, right? Well, I think that's what's the right thing to do. All right, brother. Very good. I appreciate it. Were, were, were we good today? I did. I enjoyed it. I look forward you, to chatting. You kept me so busy. I didn't get my second cup of coffee. Sorry, bro. God, you're a slave driver. No, I'm, I'm all, I'm empty. Love you, brother. I'll talk to you later. So is this tomorrow? Are we on for tomorrow? Yeah, and I will um I'll send you um my notes. All right. Adios.